Hello, everyone. This is Moving Forward with Andrea. It is May 5th, and we are at Bristol Entertainment Studios for recording and uh, for voice. And uh, this is across the street from uh, Berkeley Music uh, School of Music. And um, we are on Mass Ave, and I am here with Shaded Glitch. And I'm happy to be here. We got a surprise for you folks later, but we're not going to get into that now. First of all, I want to say hello to Shaded Glitch, and how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Andrea. How are you doing today? I am excited to be here to see uh, what's in store. First of all, I'd like to ask you, um, what uh, got you started in this business? What is the, uh, you know beginning of your life has this always been in your blood or is this something that just came about in the last couple of years um since the age of four i remember it exactly uh, my mom was outside gardening and i went out there and said you know mom i, I want to be a singer one day and she probably thought you know okay all right you know she he probably wants to be an astronaut and a president also but you know i just kept asking asking so my parents put me in um, performance troops and we would perform at you know the senior citizens home and daycares you know and i thought i was on top of the world and how old were you when you started that um, probably about four or five and then you know progressed to local theater in my town and then middle school and then after my freshman year of high school I, I entered a uh, American Idol contest in the town of Franklin Mass and excuse me is that like the American Idol that's on TV the re regular American Idol or um, it was some type of that uh, it was you know there was a first place winner and mm -hmm. you know with that if you won first place you got uh, free recording time and you got to do three cover songs. And luckily, I won first place out of 10 contestants. And um, at, the, at that time, my voice was changing. And I really, I really couldn't sing that many songs. So I said, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off. I'm going to find a producer. I'm going to write my own music and create my own vision. And I found a producer. And right off the bat, he was like, you know, this isn't my strongest point, electronic music. So he pushed me in the direction of another producer, Ryan Manning, who was the former drummer of electro duo Young London from Boston. And he's now- oh, Excuse me, so can you tell the folks out there when they listen to this on YouTube? Um, Cause that's where I'll virally put this out until my book comes out. Um, what? Who is New London? That's like a famous electric... Young London. Excuse me, Young London. Young Who? London is an electro duo. It's a, a female and a male, which they're now Contact. They changed the name. They're acoustic setting um, type of band. But I opened for them at the Middle East. Um, I was their opening act. And wow. they do you know a lot of electronic music. And they're very, very big now. Um, they just did Warp Tour last year, and they're going back on there. And Ryan is now in... A rock and roll uh, rock and roll band called the Devil's Twins out of Boston, and they just uh, were on tour. And so he and I, um, Ryan and I, started creating and producing together. But not just music; we created a whole a vision of music and fashion and a storyline to my music. So that's where we came up with the idea of, you know, music is more than just music it's an art form so that's you know how shaded glitch came came to be can you tell us your little secret on how you came up with that name because i'm interested because uh you definitely are glitchy and i actually put a little glitch on myself i, I got some <laughs> i wanted to uh fit in today uh can you tell us a little bit is there a reasoning behind that there so there's two parts so you have shaded and shaded is i for some reason i'm obsessed with sunglasses um it kind of became my signature and I have over like 70 pairs and oh, I know it's and they have to be really out there and outrageous and crazy because um, I just love that type of fashion and also you know when I put them on it gives me the confidence mm -hmm. and um, you know it shades me from negativity or judgment that. towards my art form because you know everyone has their own opinions about everyone's music which is fine and well, uh, let me just say one thing honey if you don't have any haters then you're not doing the right thing. Because you know what? The more famous you get, the more you're going to get as far as haters. Because if you have haters, they're thinking about you too. You know what I mean? So people, it's sometimes they're like that because they just, they're um, insecure and they don't have drive. Because it takes a lot for what you do, what I do, what anyone does that tries really hard in life because it's hard work and it's easy to quit. It's not easy to stay in and try hard to do what you want to do. And you know that, so I'm gonna let you finish. Yeah. And there are many times when you do want to quit, but you keep going. And then, so Glitch, um, in school, I was kind of the uh, 
outspoken one. I was kind of like the weird kid um, artistically. Um, you know, I like to try different fashion styles, and I just had a you know different beat to my drum. And you know, people would always be like, "Oh, you're weird. You're weird." And I kind of thought, you know, maybe like you know, maybe there was a glitch in the system when I was born. Maybe I'm not supposed to be like everyone else. So that's where Shaded Glitch came from. So you actually put that into a positive. I like that. And, and in other words, screw you. Screw this you. is it. And you know what? Now look at you. And, um, you know, uh, things could happen really quickly. It's happened with a lot of people I talk to. And it is hard work. Like I said, you know, you know my show's about moving forward. I'm writing a book. Um, and, like, a question that is really important to me and that for the folks out there that listen to this and for the book is how do you move forward professionally and personally and what helps you, you know, keep on going so that maybe someone out there, it might help them because a lot of people sometimes don't know how to go about things exactly. or they have the wrong people around them and they think they do have the right people. But one question I say to them to make sure is, is are they cheerleaders of yours and do um, – I mean, long as you're not hurting anyone or yourself, whatever you want to do, people that care about you should be for you, no matter what. And if they're not, then see you later. Exactly. You know? So, when, you know, when I was in school, I was the one that kind of stood up for the underdogs, you know, who were getting bull bullied and stuff. But when it came to me, I, I couldn't stand up for myself. Um, and that really, I hate confrontation. I hate negativity. I'm always the one to crack the joke um, and just keep it moving. And... Um, and, and then it came to the time when I was like, you know, I'm not going to let myself be a victim, mm -hmm. you know, and you have to, you have to stand up for yourself, you know, you and so that's your, one of your, yeah. you have to stand up for yourself is number one. And how do you get past that when you're in a situation like that? Because I, you, well, you already said that you, um, you know, you just turn it into a positive. And when you have to stand in front of that negativity, how do you deal with that? Because that's the hottest part, you know what I mean? Because sometimes when you're in a situation, you can't walk away because it's, whether it's work or whatever. I mean, how do you do that? Um, it's, it's tough. Like I said, you have to stand up for yourself. And you don't have to do it in you know, a physical way or yeah, verbally yeah. abusive. You just have to know that you're not going to take anything that people are going to throw your way. And you're stronger than that. And, you know, it might stress you out. It might give you anxiety. But, like, for me, when I face situations like that, you know, I go home and I listen to music. For me, my music, I don't want people to listen to my music and escape their problems. I want my music to help face their problems. Because when I listen to music, that's what I do. I evaluate a situation and I just go step by step. You know, it really uh, took me on a trip to just really fix situations. Well, that's, you know, I have to say... You're the first musician that I've interviewed that have told, has told me that, you know, you want that to make things, like, the, a lot of people say they use it to heal, but you, what you're saying is a little bit different. Can you just explain it a little bit differently so that people understand that are listening? Because I think it's pretty cool. That's why I was saying, like, everyone's insight's different, and the way you think might be different from someone else, but it might help other people that, exactly. you know, are really trying to do the right thing and really want to be successful in life, you know? So, you know, a lot of singers, and that's great. Sometimes I just listen to music to just escape and just get stress off. But, you know, every, at my age, 20 years old, you know, everything's mo go, 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 go. And you just... 20 years old, yeah, folks. Yeah. I'm so old, so old. Um, but it's just, you have to... When I have my music, I want it to be a positive message. And when people have struggles and stuff, they say music is a huge healer. And, you know, I want people to face their problems and their fears and their insecurities and things that, you know, scare them through my music. And I do electronic music. And for me, it's so healing. There's so much emotion in it. And I just want people to just ev evaluate situations. Because when I would get into, you know, confrontations, I would listen to music and plan out and step by step. You know, some people go shoot hoops. Some people... Yeah. make up a dance choreography some people play, go play baseball for me you know music was there to save me and give me my answers whether and, it was an upbeat song or an, a, a, a sad Adele song <laughs> yeah no I hear you so definitely it takes you to another level so you're thinking oppositely it doesn't make them forget their problems it helps them get through their problems folks out there that are listening to this when you do hear it um, so that is another avenue now what is your future plans and, like, 
Well, first of all, what are you working on right now? Because I know you got something coming up next weekend, and if I don't have to work, I'd lo- I'm definitely going to go because uh, actually the guy that's putting on the fashion show I know personally. Um, but uh, I want to hear a little bit about that first. So Roman Vangeli, he's the uh, he's the owner of Vangeli Entertainment, and um, this is my second fashion show with him that I'm going to be performing at. Um, I did it last year in a phenomenal time, great turnout, and... Um, it's a cash prize. That was last year, and I think this one is a cash prize also for the models. Um, and I, last year, headlined the show. I, you know, I did four songs, and my glitches and I, that's what I call my dancers, and people who are supporters of my music. Um, oh, excuse me, so you have dancers that come out with you? I have dancers. I, How many dancers do you have with you? I have two. And we, nice. All after this, we are rehearsing all night, um, because this Saturday, May 10th, um, at uh, Tommy's Lounge in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Uh, tickets are $15. Doors open at 8, and the show starts at 9. And it's a Saturday night, and it's going to be going all night. Excuse me, can you tell the folks out there, um, is there a, an email, or, excuse me, a website that they can um, look to, you know, can you click on tickets? Is it your site, or is it, is it um, Vigilante's Entertainment site? Like, how can they get a hold of that? Well, if you follow my artist page, facebook.com slash shaded glitch, you can personally message me. Um, and I can also post a link on my Facebook page, and that's facebook.com slash shaded glitch. But I'm sure he has it on his entertainment page as well. I can post that link on my page also. Yeah. All right, so we'll make sure that happens. So you're working on that coming up, so can you tell us what your future plans are? Um, my future plans are to... F- get my EP out there titled Lost in the Labyrinth. It's a seven song EP. Um, and then just continue gigging and, you know, hopefully pick my bags up and go out to California, California to make the, uh, the big jump. Yeah, just, well, just pound the pavement. You're, you're, you're young and you do got to get yourself out there from a lot of people I talk to. And, um, exposure is the biggest thing, especially out of your element. Because uh, if you feel comfortable anywhere, you're gonna, you're, you're, that's it. You need that. It's, it takes experience, and you're young. You got it going on. I think that's great. Um, and is there anything else that you would like to say to the folks out there to help them with their future uh, of moving forward? If you want to go into this business of music or just move forward, you need, you need to have a plan. You can have all the talent in the world. You can have the dream. But you can't sit there and, you know, twiddle your thumbs. And I did that for a while. And then, it, you know, after I graduated high school, I, I pounded the pavement. You know, I got, I got three jobs. I was working constantly. And if you want to go into this business personally, you know. It's an investment. I'm consuming money-wise and stuff, but you get what you want out of it and it can turn into a beautiful thing it can turn into a, a full-on career and i you know i've had a lot of success you know i opened for uh dev dev was a part of the cataracts she sings the song like a g6 bass down low oh. i opened for her at the middle east it was kind of like her comeback tour can i ask you something do you know nervo yes uh, i was in vegas and i seen them live and they are I talk about fans. That's cr- those yeah, girls are insane. I was in Hakkasan, which is one of the worldwide clubs out there. That's I want to see you get it to that level. I think you definitely could because what you're doing fits into that, and that's why I brought it up because I was there last October and um, it was insane. Yeah, I mean it was a crazy night. It was uh, I was celebrating a birthday, so um, just so you know, I mean that's cool, and uh, I know a lot of people out there, so I definitely. Uh, I'd love to see you hit that, and uh, looking forward to seeing you in the future grow and be a part of that. And is there anything else you'd like to tell the folks out there? Just if you are around May 10th at Tommy's Lounge in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, um, and also my EP Lost in the Labyrinth should be out by June. I'm praying it is. And it'll be out on iTunes, Amazon. It will be in digital copy and also CD disc form. So check it out and how can people get a hold of you now to keep um do you have a website or just through facebook i'm in the middle of making a website right now my most active is facebook uh, but you can follow me on twitter and instagram at shaded glitch and check out my soundcloud soundcloud.com slash shaded glitch but yes i'm in the middle of making a website 
It's just been so busy with my EP trying to get it out because people have been asking. And once they start asking, you know. But you want to make sure it's perfect because, you know, exactly. especially the first time, you want to make sure it's just flawless. All right. Well, I'm going to thank you very much for this interview. And uh, I'm glad to uh, have you here. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you play live. And uh, we have a surprise for you folks after this interview. And um, I'm going to uh, say thank you. Thank you, Andrea, for having me. And I can't wait for the surprise we're going to give the listeners. Thank you so much.